Hi, welcome to First Post. <clears throat> we are here to discuss Rally for Rivers with Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev, followed by millions of people across the world uh, on this on this what I call ambitious, which you will you will hear uh, uh, Jaggi Vasudev ji saying why it is not ambitious <clears throat> uh, in this in this beautiful, fabulous, lush gardens of uh, Raj Bhavan and overlooking the sea, we are going to be discussing, I think, a perfect setting for discussing uh, environment and how to repair what we have done to this uh, the environment in the last 50, 25 years, as uh, we keep saying. <coughs> Sir, welcome to First Post. It's about 40% uh, of uh, your rally underway now. It, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's over. So what's it been like? So till now, we've covered seven states, including Maharashtra. Yeah. These seven states are ruled by six different political parties <laughs> but in one voice, they're supporting this. Okay. This is incredible and people are telling me, the media is telling me, in the history of independent India, this has never happened, that all these parties are agreeing to one thing and not only agreeing, supporting and making a big noise about it in their states. This is wonderful. I. I know this is a very difficult thing and uh, there'll be so much criticism about it, but I want to acknowledge the political class for standing up for what truly matters to the nation. Small things, they may be fighting on a daily basis. Yes. When real big things come, they stand up and in, they speak in one voice. I think uh, it's a fantastic thing. At the same time, the Puducherry chief minister was sharing uh, when in the public, he said, Sadhguru, twenty-four years ago, when I was in Rajiv Gandhi's uh, cabinet, the experts at that time prepared a policy which is very similar to what you're saying. But we just could not get the consensus from the states. We tried very hard, but we could not get the consensus. But now all the sixteen states I'm driving through and many other states which I'm not driving through, they're all calling and saying, we are with you. Please give us the policy we will implement before the center pass. So, consensus, which was the biggest hurdle, effortlessly we've crossed. Thanks to all the political leaders who made this happen. Now, the next step is a policy like this, a comprehensive policy which has many layers of complexities in implementation. It is not simple. There are many, many challenges, legislative challenges, uh, legal challenges and administrative challenges and social challenges. Apart from that, there is a large financial outlay and there is a gestation period which is not considered reasonable by most people. If you aggressively implement this, this will take ten to fifteen years of implementation and it will take another five to ten years for actually rivers to rise, it will rise only fifteen percent or twenty percent. But visually, you can see rivers have come up. I don't go by how many thousands or millions of cusacks of water, that's not the point. Visually, for me in my experience, from the age of twelve to seventeen, I used to swim in Kaveri almost every day. Now if I go to the same places, I can just walk across. In twenty-five years' time, I want to see that once again people will be swimming in the same place. Why I'm saying this is, this is real time, real things. Somewhere figures, vague figures, scientific figures, uh, that's not what we want to see. Real time, if you want to see rivers actually came up, it'll take twenty to twenty-five years. This means four to five governments would have come and gone by the simple democratic process. So I'm saying such a long gestation period, many complexities in implementation and it's not an election-winning policy. So who will do it? Unless people of this nation give a clear call that we want this, that we have matured, we are not a freebie generation, we have matured as a citizenry. If you do something that is for the long-term well-being of this nation and the future generations, we are with you. This is what I'm asking them to do with this phone call. I'm saying a minimum of thirty crore calls must come. Why thirty crore is this is forty percent of the electorate. 
this is the election winning number. So if if forty percent of the electorate clearly in one voice say, we want you to take long term steps for the reverse, not ad hoc steps and saying, I'll give you this, I'll give you that. If we say this, a government cannot ignore this. Because people tell me, oh, why can't you just talk to the pri prime minister, why all this? They don't understand the complexity of the policy. It is not a simplistic policy. When I talk to the media, I'm talking one kilometer. That's not how it is. That is the minimum we are speaking. Depending upon the topographical features and various other soil and other conditions, there are many things to be done, which is very complex. There is much science involved in this. Implementation is not going to be, okay, you pass an order, some collector will do it, it'll not be like that. Experts have to sit on the ground, many, many things have to be done. This is like a revolution of a different kind, really. Only then this will be fully successful. Otherwise, unfortunately, it may happen in parts. Parts is like a... it's not a real solution. Okay? So, people always think, it's like you want to have a baby, full baby is too much trouble, so have, have half a baby, you know, Solomon's wisdom <laughs> So, it's not going to work like that. So, for this to happen, to push the government to take that full step, which is not necessarily a populistic step, to take that, people must say in one voice, Instead of… I'm asking for minimum thirty crore, if you give me sixty crore calls, tell me which government will say no. How can they say no? Yes, that's what a democracy is. So that's what I'm trying to get. On the way, of course, there is many million… Uh, I mean, million varieties of situations. We are a, such a diverse population. Above all, we have too many armchair environmentalists. We've never done a thing on the ground. And we have scientists who are knowledgeable, but they're sitting up there. When I… the comments that are coming to me, generally overwhelming support everywhere. But this small voice which we want to hear because they've done work. They've done genuine work, there's no question about it. We want to hear their voice because we want to get every input we can get. We have been consultation with some of the top scientists. But some of the scientists are sitting up there on the tower. They are saying, unless you pull down the dams, unless you pull out all the cities which are on the river bank, yes. there is no solution. Sadhguru is getting corrupt, he is trying to please the political class. Yes. Tell me, yes. pulling down the dam and pulling down city, is it ever going to happen? Never. You think so? No, never. It's it's never ne that means you don't want to do anything, you only want to earn a PhD. I want something to happen, I want to marry science and politics so that both of them make compromises and find a solution. This is what the policy is about, it must be economically sustainable, otherwise people will make sure it never happens, okay? We have many idealistic policies like this which never come onto the ground because we don't take a practical step. So. We are trying to make this as balanced and as practical as possible, at the same time that it will have significant ecological impact. So in this effort, we are driving through, as you said, forty percent. I didn't think of it, that what percentage. I was only thinking the most difficult part of the journey is over because six different parties we've covered, all of them full on. The next states we are going are all one party. I think it's an easy run <laughs> yeah. okay. So, there's a lot to discuss, especially uh, on the marriage of science and politics, you said. I think it's a great phrase. Uh, phrase. Um, <clears throat> from what you have just said, so sounds to me like uh, the, the politician is not the unwilling bride here. Is it the scientist then? What the, the kind of… Uh, uh... See, they're like two different religions. Mm -hmm. It's like getting a Hindu and a Muslim married. <laughs> so, you're sure you're, you're traveled some distance in uh, answering the scientists' uh, yeah, objections to this? Like, <clears throat> see, those scientists who are very academic in nature, they may know, they do know many things, which is very important. 
But at the same time, you can't t turn the country into a rainforest once again. How it was thousand years ago, you can't go back, there's no question about it. How to do what we can do for the future without disturbing human settlements, without disturbing the economic process. Anything against the economic process you talk, it's a sure failure, okay? So we are seeing how to, in many ways, reinforce the economic process. This is essentially an economic plan with a significant ecological impact. And that's the only way it'll work. All the five stakeholders are addressed here. First stakeholder is the river. The second st stakeholder is the life that the river sustains. When I say life, India as a subcontinent has the highest number of species living off the rivers. I don't know why it is so... F the more I look at it, the more amazing it is. This small piece of land, probably four or five percent of the country's world's yeah. land mass, yeah. in this, there are more species of plants and animals than you will find anywhere. anywhere. There is no geographical explanation to this, because there are many countries at the same latitude. It's... it's amazing. It's amazing means... it's mind-boggling. Why is it? Why, I've been thinking, why is it? I... you know, right from ancient times, our sages and our scriptures and many others, always claiming that this is the greatest land, this is the most whatever uh, sacred land. I thought everybody loves their country, everybody loves their language, everybody loves their culture, I, that's okay, I'm not somebody who gets emotionally moved by these things. But now, looking at the biodiversity of this country, I'm wondering, probably they knew that's why they were talking like this. Because it's amazing. Uh, I... I cannot put numbers on it, I'm not some kind of a scientist or an environmentalist, but when I look at it from what simple understanding of uh, outside... you know, from like an outsider looking at it, it's almost like if you take entire North American continent, which is probably many times over India, probably we have ten, twenty times more biodiversity. Why? I, I'm not able to explain why. Sure. I've been asking this question to whoever seems to be knowledgeable about these things. Nobody seems to know why, it's just there, that's all we know. What is it that made this land like this, that it's so rich? So the onus and responsibility is on us that we keep it that way. And in future, having this many species in our land may become the greatest asset. True. Yes? Yeah. Definitely. So, uh, are you saying that uh, the... the opposition or the criticism that is happening about... this is... this is... Uh, criticism... Is no, criticism is just very minuscule. Right. I am not bothered about that. It's there. Because we are not doing this unilaterally. Right. We are consulting the best scientists in the country and there I... you know, that... I don't want to name people <laughs> right now, we, we will acknowledge them later, because they don't want to be into the... you know. I'm... I'm somebody who sticks my neck out all the time for anything and everything. They want to go in a certain way, they don't want their names out, later on we'll acknowledge those people. The top water experts in the country, I sat with them and said, see... I said, see, I don't know any of your science, nor am I an environmentalist. But I'm somebody who's engaged with life, right from my very early childhood. I don't go anywhere without being involved with what's around me, so I pay attention. In my attention and my simple sense, this is how I see it and I explain to them in about two hours' time what this policy means. Then I asked, is the science with me? They said in one voice, Sadhguru, science is hundred percent with you. Can you get the policy... politics? So that's when I said, I'll get them married, don't worry. Okay, so when was this? Hmm? When this... when... when this... this uh, germ of an idea... when was it? It's... See, I've been engaged with mountains, forests and rivers right from my childhood. When I say engaged and involved, not as seeing it as a resource or a natural beauty, not in that sense. I lived there and I've always experienced these things. These situations of being in jungles and, you know, floating down the rivers, this always made me more about how insignificant a life I am. That tomorrow, if I... if I drown in this river, everything goes on fine. People like you and me come and go, 
in millions. But the rivers and forests have lived for millions of years and lived on. But that's come to a threat now. It may not flow, many of them are not flowing. So last twenty-five years I've been watching this depleting. So about twenty, twenty-two years ago we started this project Green Hands. With that we planted over uh, thirty-two million trees now. It has increased the green cover in Tamil Nadu. Well, we've changed the culture in many ways, people have become much more conscious. It spawned hundreds of other organizations which are doing similar work, which is wonderful. But in the last seven, eight years, I'm seeing the drop in the river waters is so steep, alarmingly steep in the last seven years. I don't have a hundred percent explanation why it's suddenly going like this. I think in my mind, out of simple common sense, I'm saying, I think it's because the bore wells are sinking over fifteen hundred feet. I think directly these aquifers are just sucking out the river water and going into the bore wells. And uh, unfortunately, many NGOs and others have dug up rivers. They've dug up rivers like canals. This is, I heard you say that. Yeah. This is murder of the river, you know. This is to please the local farmer. But after some time, neither the father, farmer will benefit nor the river will benefit, nothing will benefit. So, m maybe it is because of that or maybe there are other factors. Maybe there's not enough vegetation, so the water is not getting in, everything is just going as a flood, whatever the factor. Last seven, eight years, the steep is very alarming. I've been watching with, with some, you know, consternation, but... I try to encourage other people to do this because I didn't want to get into this. My fundamental work is spiritual. These are things when… Uh, when they irritate me beyond a point, I get into action <laughs> So I try to encourage other people who are involved in this type of work. But then I saw nobody seems to have a breadth of understanding. And if they have understanding, they are not practical people. Being practical is very important because otherwise we will talk great things and do nothing. So, I jumped into it, I got everybody into it, the entire foundation. Three months, all Isha Foundation's activity stands still. Yes, millions of people are on the job. They are all standing out on the street from morning to evening doing rally for rivers. It's been an incredible run till now and I'm sure things are only going to build up. But just building up this momentum is not the goal. The goal is the government should feel confident that they can take such a long-term step and still have people with them. Otherwise, if you do not make an elected government comfortable, it's not going to happen. I'm very sure about that. So you mentioned somewhere that uh, there is a problem for every solution in India. <laughs> I didn't say there's a problem, there are yeah. people yeah, okay. who have become experts in finding a problem yeah. in every solution. Right. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> so, in, in, in that sense, there is this directly, it, it, it must have irritated you uh, enough, but I'll ask you the question nonetheless, uh, that the vehicle you're driving is producing so much uh, poisonous <laughs> gases. Anyway, they got the basic arithmetic wrong. Yes, I would want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> this is about people who have a squint <laughs> I want them also to make the missed call, but uh, let me tell you, the vehicle I'm driving, is it legal? It is. Mercedes openly advertises the G-Wagon that I'm driving, Mercedes openly advertises it. It's a legal vehicle cleared by the government of India. It is a Euro 5 emission standards, it's the highest emission standard on the planet, on the planet, yes. Only thing is, some people think their opinion is more important than the law of the land. This is what I want to change. This is what I want to change even with the environment. Your opinion is never about the law of the land. If you think the law is not meeting all the aspects, you must strive to change the law, which is what I'm trying to do. Right now I feel the laws are inadequate to protect our rivers, so I'm trying to change the law. But the moment you think your opinion is bigger than the law, you are producing a lynch mob. 
you are trying to see that somebody will, instead of throwing flowers at me, they will throw stones at me, that's what you're trying. So, you want a lynch mob of a nation? No. If I want a law-abiding nation, so if I have broken the law, tell me, ban the vehicle, I'll drop it here and take something else and drive. But any of them, we thought it's seven thousand kilometers, already it's four thousand seven hundred, only forty percent, probably will cross nine thousand kilometers for all you know. Nine thousand kilometers in thirty days, every day I'm doing a minimum of ten to twelve interviews and meetings and on the road, stopping wherever people want me to stop this. Ask any one of them to do it. People half my age, let them do it, let me see. So I'm saying, you are trying to p find a problem in the solution, all right? Now the problem you, you have is that you don't understand how much e ecological damage you're doing. Anyway, they're shooting all this stuff in a studio. Let me tell you, the BBC has released these numbers. A television stu studio per hour generates 820 kilograms of carbon, okay? Please, uh, for all the bhagwas that's happening <laughs> with all due respect to news channels and others who are doing useful work, I'm saying so much of it happening, the entertainment, stuff, reality shows, everything, all that you need. But if I drive, you want me to drive an auto rickshaw, 9000 kilometers? Tell me, at least tell me which brand I should drive, please, sir. You give me a suggestion which brand should I drive. You drive through the many of these uh, stretches we are doing in the night. Throughout the day we have something going, entire day, and then driving in the night. Hey, look at me, I'm an old man <laughs> At least some comfort and safety. Have you ever driven long distances on Indian roads, how dangerous it is to drive in the night? Every moment is a possible that you could get into a mess, okay? So, if I drive a car which is fit for that kind of journey, which is safe, which is uh, reasonably comfortable, it's not the most comfortable vehicle, believe me, it is reasonably comfortable, and above all, it's legal. So, if you want to form your own law and persecute me for that, you are a… you are breeding lynch mobs. Please stop that. Let's make this into a law-abiding nation, okay? I want all of you, those of you who are, you know, going like this, I want all of you, it doesn't matter, you don't like me. It doesn't matter because you don't have to marry me, nor do you have to take me as a guru, all right? You don't have to do any of those things, please give a missed call. Because this is for the future of this nation and for our children and I'm sure… I'm sure somewhere deep within your heart, even for you it matters. Please do that. Say some more nasty things about me, but make sure the nation gives missed calls. So, okay. so <laughs> in a sense, are you saying, sir, that uh, the 28,000 kilotons of uh, gases or whatever that this journey is supposed to emit are, are the best bad gases that will be produced because the, 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 uh, the purpose is something much, much No, random. no, I wouldn't say that. Anyway, they got the arithmetic all wrong. Yes. They said some eight lakh trees mm. if you have to plant. No, it's actually some... 2500 trees. Anyway, I already told you, we planted 32 million trees. Now I have signed uh, MOUs for 50 crore trees here and 25 crores in this thing and all the government lands in Tamil Nadu openly the chief minister declared, Sadhguru, we will give it to you, you plant how many ever you want. So compensatory action will be done, but anyway, if I am… that is a test vehicle. If I am not driving, somebody is testing out… Exactly. <laughs> it's going to be out there anyway. See, anyway, it's going to be out there. And the Mahindra vehicles are also used vehicles. My vehicle has already done 30,000 30, 30, 30, kilometers. Mahindra vehicles also uh, used vehicles, all given to us for thirty days of usage. We did not buy any of them. All of them given to us as this thing. It is wonderful the industry is looking at it like this. Though they know when we pass ecological laws, it may be… it may hit them. In spite of that, they're sponsoring. Usually, they will never sponsor anything ecologically related stuff because it always goes against them. Now, they're sponsoring it. Should you not appreciate that instead of… At least learn your arithmetic properly <laughs> You… you mentioned uh, stakeholders. In this, I find uh, for this to actually uh, succeed, finally, if it is a… if it is made into a policy and all that, it's the farmer. 
So what is the outreach to the farmer? Have you already made some outreach or yes? See, going and preaching and teaching the farmer is no use. Yes. So we have made small-scale demonstrations. Mm -hmm. How a farmer who shifts mm -hmm. from crop-based agriculture to tree-based agriculture, right. his income can multiply three to eight times okay. in a matter of six to seven years. Demonstrated in India? In yes, India. yes. In Tamil Nadu? In Tamil Nadu. Some things have been done in Maharashtra also by other people. Okay. Now, what is needed is a large-scale demonstration. In every state, we want to create a large-scale demonstration, which all the states have gone through, I've suggested, they've all said hundred percent, they will identify... They said, you choose the river where you want to do it, because I want to choose a small stream where the difference can be seen. If you go for a large river, you may not see it. If you go for a small stream, in four to five years, you can show a difference. That is for ecological purposes. But in three years' time or five years' time, you can clearly demonstrate economically this is much better than what you were doing. Some Vietnamese experts were with us uh, for a few days as a part of this rally. In their country, the farmers who shifted from paddy cultivation to fruit cultivation, their incomes went up by twenty times, two thousand percent. We were amazed, we said, how did you guys do this? They're laughing at us. They said, twenty, twenty-two years ago, we all came to Indian universities, agriculture universities, we studied there, we came here and implemented what we learned. You guys have all earned PhDs. They, this is exactly their words I'm telling you, yes. So, all the knowledge is sitting there, but in this country, everything is sitting in silos. Now, we need a, an agency or an authority which will take this knowledge and technologies which are there to the ground. Our farmers are still irrigating the lands as they did a thousand years ago, and they think it's their right. In Telangana and other places, they were saying, because nine hours in the night is when they're getting the power when the other load is less, they're getting in the night. Mm -hmm. All of them have automatic turn-on things. So everybody's farm, it's automatic on, nine hours simply water runs, okay, because they'll sleep. Rain, rain. Yes. So things like this are happening, eighty-four percent of water usage in the country is agriculture. In many other countries, for the similar crops that we are growing, their yields are much higher, but the water that they're using is ten to twenty percent of the water we are using. Very easily with... with small interventions, mm. not with major interventions, with small interventions, not some super technology, some mm. simple micro-irrigation technologies if you bring in, very easily we can bring down the present consumption of water in the country to thirty percent for agriculture, thirty percent. We are telling our children, when you drink water, every drop you must drink, as consciousness it's good, yes. but it doesn't solve any problem. Eighty-four percent of the water is consumed by agriculture, very easily you can change that. So I am suggesting, this is not to be compelled on a farmer, where they are willing, we are thinking of forming large FPOs, which we have already done around Coimbatore. <laughs> and our FPO, which is only three and a half years old, is being today rated as the best FPO in the country. But let me admit you on camera, admit to you on camera, we've done nothing, okay? <laughs> we've done no work on the ground. All we have done is, three of our volunteers are using their cell phone, renegotiating prices and di directing them which market they should go, what they should do, this is all. We've done nothing on the ground. With this, farmer's income has doubled. This is all. Three cell phones we are using, probably four, five hours a day they are on phones talking to everybody here, there. Okay. This is about the job we have done. Really? On the ground, if we work, which mm. we want to do now, mm. we can further multiply their income if you do the right things on the ground. Okay. No work on the ground, we've doubled the income of the farmer. Sure. Sure. So we want to form large-scale FPOs. Let's say thousand farmers come together and they own ten thousand acres, I'm... I'm just shooting the numbers, okay? Ten thousand acres are here, a river is flowing here. Now government should give access to the river water. 
Now, each farmer puts one, one bore well. In ten acres, he puts four or five bore wells. I met a farmer very close to our place. Three and a half acres he has, a twenty-seven-year-old farmer. I'm asking, what do you do for your water? It's a rich place, you know, it's a fertile land. He's put nine bore wells in three and a half acres of land. Nine bore wells will cost one crore rupees. When is he going to earn this money? Either he has to leave town, sell the land or hang himself. This all the option, he's driving himself into it. Because people are advising, borewell companies are saying, one more borewell you'll get water, one more you will get water. It's like gambling, they're just hitting it. Borewells and irrigation systems are the most expensive part of farming. And also digging deeper into distress. Yes. You, once they get into this kind of loan, he is not going to be out in his life, this one crore rupees. I don't know if it's from the banks or the private loan agencies. So somebody will come and take his land or somebody will harass him to death. One of these things will happen. So what I'm saying is 10,000 acres. We want this to be outsourced, irrigation to be outsourced because there are companies which are already doing and ready to do, but there is so much emotion about it. Oh, you let somebody on your land, this will happen, that will happen. So just outsourcing, clear-cut loss that they'll never have rights over the land. But the farmer has to f f keep his commitment that if his contract is signed for ten years, ten years they're there for sure, he can't break that either. We… we are looking at legal experts to form law, you know, framework uh, like this, legal framework like this, that outsource the water irrigation. Then, uh, just to give an example, see in Karnataka, I have been doing farming in the… in the past. I was getting around 210 nuts per coconut tree. I know farmers who are getting over 250 nuts per tree. In Tamil Nadu, the average is 110 nuts. In Kerala, it's eighty nuts, okay? Because in Tamil Nadu and Kerala, they largely flood irrigate. Coconut trees don't like it. They just need eighty to ninety liters per day. If it's rainy season and it's reasonably soil is wet, twenty-five, thirty liters per day. I'm saying if a company is pumping and it costs money for them to pump, they will just do the right thing. When the yield comes, you have to share in percentage or you must give a fixed fee per acre so much, whatever we arrive at. Now the company irrigates for you. Farmer's life becomes easy. Whatever you are growing, you have to go to your farm only sixty days to sixty-five days in a year. Rest of the time you can do some allied industry, value addition, some other business, you can do something else. Farmer's income will multiply in that also, not just in the farm. Very easily the farm yields will multiply because fertilization also will happen through this irrigation system and it'll happen efficiently. They will fire… Uh, they will hire qualified people to do this job and water, you will bring it down to twenty-five to thirty percent of what is being used right now. And this is the solution for the future. But there is so much emotion about it. Oh, my land, if somebody comes and irrigates… Also privatization, the, the, the many people who will say privatization, that's yeah. the best way to… See, that is the whole problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't understand we have taken a step away from communism and socialism. We have decided we will go the commercial way. Every day if you want to take a backward step, there are a whole lot of people who are stuck in socialism. It cannot work like that. All of us have to decide this is the policy chosen by the government. And as a nation we have chosen this. Once we choose something, Going on debating whether it's good, it's like you got married twenty-five years later, you're still debating, is this the right girl? It's stupid. Whoever you married, you put your heart and soul into it, it'll… something will happen. That's how life happens. So once we have chosen a system, you don't go on debating which is the best system. No system is good if you ask me, okay? But you can make every system work. There will always be a flip side to everything. But you can minimize the flip side and do the best that you can do. Every day you take a forward step, somebody wants to take a backward step. This should go and we must understand, this is not a joke because three hundred million people are still not even eating. You go into a village and see today, I'm talking about the better off stage, you go into Tamil Nadu because I travel extensively here. Sixty percent of the people, their skeletal systems have not grown to full size. 
And most urban people think, oh, that's how villagers are like that only, small there. <laughs> you need to understand the man did not eat properly from day one. We are producing an entirely substandard humanity. If your body did not grow to its full size, even your brains did not grow to full size, you have a substandard humanity. You're talking about demographic dividend. Where is the dividend? Only if you produce quality human beings, full body, full brain and some skill, yes. then it's a dividend. Otherwise, where is the dividend? It's a drag, yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> considering that uh, po politics especially, politicians especially are petrified of pushback from farmers and that limits them from doing various things that they may want to do. So, how do you think this, this entire grand plan, how will you align that, the that farmers? See, twenty-five percent of the land is in the government hands. Okay. This so itself there. is four to five years of work, okay. full scale if you okay, go. Okay, so start there. We will start only in the jungles. Oh. Just now somebody was asking me, hmm. Sadhguru, there is a, this thing, hill, hmm. can you plant this hill for us? Right. Two hills are there in our village, yeah. but it's not catchment area, there's no river. Okay. I said, every square inch of land is catchment area. Hmm. If you plant enough, right. you will see streams will start flowing from a hill which was dry. We've seen this happening, okay? In, in many places. Not only done by us, many other people have done this. United, in United States, the New York State did something very revolutionary. In 1984 or 5, they wanted to set up a filtration unit for the New York City. The budget given was 9.2 billion dollars, filtration for New York City. Instead of that, the administration at that time took this stand. Instead of investing 9.2 billion and putting a filtration, they instead invested 1.5 billion dollars and planted the entire region. Six rivers are feeding New York City. All the six rivers, they did extensive plantation. New York City is one of the few cities in the world which drinks unfiltered water because of the plantation. At 1.5 billion, they did that. There are any number of examples in the world. So, now Telangana and Andhra Pradesh are going full on, full on. Andhra Pradesh is aiming to make fifty percent of their agriculture land into horticulture. He is… He openly his mission is declared. And Telangana is doing a fabulous job of reviving tanks and ponds of the old system. Kakatiya kings had done, so they're calling it Mission Kakatiya. They are doing a wonderful job. Other states just have to emulate. I'm saying policy will come so that deviants can be handled. But why can't we do it voluntarily? What is right? So about the farmer, we will never pressure the farmer. We will set up demos, large-scale demos. Where they can see the results. Yes. See, this demo will not succeed unless the industry comes in. So I'm. I'm already been uh, talking to the… Uh, we sp I spoke to the CIA council and many other industries. We brought them together on one platform. First the industry must invest, then the farmer invest. Right now farmer invest, if the produce is good, then the industry comes if it comes, otherwise they don't come for whatever reasons. First industry must invest. After that farmer will invest, a guaranteed buyback cold storage, you will be amazed. Mm. See, these are things that must be told. Unfortunately, our media doesn't focus on positive things yeah. in a big way. You know, daily politics they handle. Yeah. Yeah. I was driving from Hyder Vijaywada to Hyderabad. Mm. This is the only place in the country. Mm. I have seen as I drove, I saw twelve cold storages run by private agencies along the highway. I have not seen this anywhere in this country. If you go in United States and California, you will see cold storages everywhere. You don't see this in this country, sixty percent of the fruit grown in this country goes rotten. At forty degrees, forty-five degrees, he's selling the fruit on the street. What is the life of the fruit? By the time you buy it, half of it is gone. Fifty, sixty percent of the nutrients are gone, you're just eating an empty shell. More than that, how much of it goes rotten? So, infrastructure, other things have to be privatized. A government cannot build these things. This is the only road on the… En in the entire country. I have… extensively I have driven in this country, yeah. this is the only place where I saw twelve cold storages, yeah. private agencies running it. This is what the nation needs. 
Great. So, <clears throat> one other question before we, we wrap up. Uh, you mentioned about uh, swimming in river, bathing in the river. Uh, in my childhood, I also uh, did the same. And, um, so, f for you and me to understand what rivers meant to us, to, to everyday life, even in a city, I was, I was in a town, not even in a village. Uh, there was there was this empathy, there was this relationship with the river. Most of our children have grown up not even seeing a river. Maybe. Yesterday in Navi, Mumbai, yeah. they welcomed me and yes. they took me into that thing. It was an unexpected thing. I didn't know there was a welcome, but it became so big. Mm -hmm. And the administration there, whatever you call that, Southern, yes. which is there, they took me inside. Mm -hmm. And some school children performing. Mm -hmm. One girl, mm -hmm. what, she's seven years, huh? Mm -hmm. One seven-year-old girl, mm -hmm. you must put her speech on your website. Oh my God, she went on and on, full blast. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, very few politicians can speak like that. She is covering such wide variety of subjects. <laughs> and she tells me, this Sadhguru is telling me, he floated down the river 165, 163 kilometers, 13 days. I don't believe all this, I have to check because I have never seen a river which... <laughs> This is, you know, this, that girl's wisdom. This is intelligence that you spoke of, intelligence questioning as opposed to dissent. Yes. Somewhere I heard about... Uh... She is saying, I have not seen a river that I can float down on, how can I believe you? I see only sand. How do I believe you that all the way there was water? <laughs> so this is my commitment. Fifty years ago, how I saw the rivers. In the next twenty-five years, we have to get it there. Please, everybody get together, okay. whoever you are. So you're hopeful that you'll be able to sell this, message, not sell this message, send this message across, make this generation also aware of what they're facing? Yes, there's a phenomenal response across the country. Mm -hmm. And irrespective of who they are, from school children to celebrities, from simple farmers to tall leaders, just about everybody is supporting it in a huge way. But I want to sh make sure a large percentage, at least sixty percent are voting when it comes to the actual voting. But I want more than that because you don't have to go to your booth, it's just, just your phone. And after all, you love your phone more than anybody on the planet. <laughs> so please use the phone and make sure you express your responsibility for this country and the future generations. This much everybody must do. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>